j I think just look at the delta. There's a delta between what we s say about Sweden and the fact that people leave and don't feel welcome. The topic of the day. We need to attract talent to Sweden. What are some of the key aspects of that message or strategy that we're not even addressing? Exactly. Because in a, in a previous context earlier um, last week, we were discussing uh, the importance of attracting talent to Sweden, talking about um, uh, what we need to do to a, achieve our sustainability goals and digitalization goals, but also um, build companies. And I'm just about to go down a route of a lot of uh, banality, so I'm going to yeah. stop right yeah. there. And one of the, the aspects of this question I found interesting, because apparently, statistically, foreigners come to Sweden for work and stay on average 22 months and on average leave Stockholm and go to Amsterdam. So for me, it wasn't necessarily about uh, attracting talent. What became clear in this is it's about retaining talent. Okay. Um, and in the glossy brochure that we tell ourselves about Sweden, one of the things is that we're so open and we're so liberal and we're so progressive and this is such a lovely country. Inclusive. Inclusive. And even though uh, many of those things are true, there's something that we need to to, to look into more deeper and maybe more, more honestly, uh, which is this openness and inclusive thing. Because if people leave on average after 22 months, then maybe we aren't as welcoming as we thought. And uh, I was just reading a, a column by the uh, Emma Stian Sturm from Stockholm School of Economics, who said, integration starts with friendship. <laughs> And as a Frenchman, your first reaction is to laugh when you hear that. But a key, uh, something that we really should work on is being maybe more friendly. And we see ourselves as friendly, but like maybe having an honest conversation, what does that look like? Inviting someone home for dinner. But, but, but why do you want to, why do you want to change the culture? Like if I'm being the devil's advocate here, you're advocating for changing a culture i'm not advocating for changing a okay. culture i'm advocating for uh i think there's a discrepancy in our self-image because i think we feel that we are friendly and open and inclusive but maybe there's nuances uh, or adaptations to allow us to be um also perceived as the, the friendly people that we feel that we are. Yeah. So there's social stuff that we could do, like come and have uh, dinner uh, with me and, uh, and my f family to someone that has come from abroad just before they leave after 22 uh, months of... But I mean, that's not a policy that can be implemented by like any maker or any policy maker or like how, how do you, how does that happen like how does that change actually happen well i don't think you can make a policy but there are national schemes and now that you put me on the spot i can't remember which country it was but um that had a, a buddy system okay. like as part of civic duty and as part of being a, a citizen you during a, a period in your life uh, has, uh, raise your hand and say i'd love to be a buddy <laughs> that's amazing actually but that's a quite easy way yeah. to allow people to access more than the job or the, the spouse's job. Interesting. So the key, or one of the key aspects to get the talent that we need is, well, first of all, to actually retain those that we have. And in order to do that is to look outside of those pure work business aspect and understand like what makes a person stay. And I, I think just look at the delta. There's a delta between what we s say about Sweden and the fact that people leave and don't feel welcome. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't... I don't think there's a one answer and I don't think there's a policy that, that decreases that delta, but there is a level of humility that we need to collectively grasp, which is uh, maybe we can do more to make people genuinely feel uh, welcome and want to take their talent, their smorgasbord of experiences and apply it here. And that's because we need it? Good point. And I think COVID has uh, allowed 
some sort of remotely first companies to grow. So not necessarily that we do need it because we can build so much without uh, attracting and retaining in the traditional sense. But from a conscious point of view and from a, a society building point of view, I still think that that delta is worth uh, looking at. Mm. Why didn't people feel welcome, even though it might not solve the exact problem? Who's supposed to do the effort here? But I, I think it's, it's humans. Everyone needs to, to make the effort. And I think coming to the party, there's n assigning blame and responsibility is I think pointless, pointless, counterproductive. It feels good to do it that way, but it doesn't actually work. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's it's about reshifting priorities in what works. Um, and it's easy to have a very Excel sheet structured way of looking at life. There's a policy, there's amount of people, there's a certain amount of jobs that need to be created and there needs to be a match. And then bureaucratically you look at how to engineer it. And then you leave your job in the, in the engineering and you go home and you tell a story of the trip that you just did uh, to, uh, to Greece or to Amman or to Cairo. And with a big smile and a huge warmth, you tell the story of the person that you met on the street and you were helped at the airport and it was so amazing and you, uh, you found the bus and you got to see this. And by not making the connections between these two, we're missing the trick. Uh, this, what we could call a soft sissy story, is absolutely key in human engineering. And retaining our people. Yes. But go out into the expat communities um, in Sweden or in Stockholm. The, the, uh, the Americans, the Dutch, the French, the Somali, whatever, they will all say the same thing. Not many people have been invited to the homes of Swedes for yeah. a casual a Sunday dinner. That's... And that in itself is an, is an interesting thing to look at. And I don't think it's because of unfriendliness. That's, no. And I think that's where my question lies, or my, what I'd like to, uh, to delve into, because it's not unfriendliness. It's, we're not accustomed to it, a little reserved. It's not the way you do, you feel uncomfortable, you don't want to impose yourself, etc. And by having a frank conversation about the Swedes not wanting to impose themselves by going, come to my house for dinner, um, creates indirect consequences that, uh, that forces us to, ha to think about how do we retain uh, and attract talent. Yeah. The collaboration that needs to happen will ultimately, and, and this is, squares this up perfectly, has to be a smorgasbord where we uh, um, meet. Very Swedish companies are now having to shift the way they think, the way they express, the language in which they are producing content or things like that, because they just can't find enough people. Because the groups and clusters that have previously worked have felt inclusive once you were on the inside, mm. um, but in reality have shut out a lot of people that haven't fit the model, which tends to be white male um, as well. And it's when you suddenly realize what's working, in, it's not working inside there any longer. Uh, so we both need to open up from a fairness point of view, which is one layer of the discussion, but we also need to uh, open it up because it's, it's, not, it's not contributing enough. It's not creating enough friction. It's not creating enough perspectives. And hopefully uh, th that has changed now. So I, I, I think we've moved from a conversation that's been very politically correct. We need diversification uh, because that's what I'm expected to now say mm. to a lot of actual pennies have dropped. That's my hope. But that's what I am sensing. Inclusion. At the end, it feels like this is that what is missing from the talent attraction discussions and talks is rather acknowledgement of inclusion, not only at work, but in society. Yeah. And what does it genuinely mean? And I think having a sober look at oneself and uh, around who's othering what um, and, and why is that not working in your advantage any longer? So who are we um, inviting for dinner? That's a great call. See? See how it works? Someone in the work environment that doesn't naturally. Yeah, maybe this is something that actually like, uh, like companies should start putting some efforts into that to foster those relationships and those connections 
potentially outside of war. I mean, that's a tricky thing because are you responsible for outside? But but like you say, who cares about who's responsible? Who cares who's responsible? Ah, genius. <laughs>